Welcome back, everybody. Today's a great day. And you know why today's a great day? Of course you do. It's because today you're going to learn Going Mobile by The Who. You're going to learn all the great chord sequences and a little bit about the leads that he's playing. And after all that's done, you'll be able to play it just like the record. Hey, if you haven't done so already, I'd love if you could jump down and click subscribe and ring the bell. It lets you know every time I release new content, which I do every single week. All my videos have jump links in them, by the way, so you can jump right to the part of the lesson uh, that you'd like to learn about and bypass some of my yapping, if you like. And hey, if you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's a couple different ways. One, you can go right down here and you see a little heart that says thanks. It's a super thanks. It's just like throwing a tip in the tip jar. And also, you can visit my Patreon channel. Um, there's three different ways of joining membership there and lots of fun stuff on there and exclusive content. So go check that out too after you watch this video. Okay, so Going Mobile by The Who. So of course, this came out in 1971 on the epic album, Who's Next? Um, and uh, this one, fun, fun song, lots of high energy. And um, you know, I've all my years playing guitar, I've never sat down and tried to actually learn this song really correctly, the way you hear it on the, on the album. Um, and so in doing so, I learned this is a capo song. You're going to capo uh, your acoustic guitar up on the seventh fret. Um, the song is in E, it's in standard tuning. So let's start with the intro part. Um, so we're in the key of E. Um, we're going to build off of the E chord, which you normally, you know, the mini bar chord that you can do up here on the seventh fret. So you're playing it just like an A chord. Um, and uh, you're just going to bar your index finger. Um, two frets above the capo, and um, you're going to give it a hard shot. Now, Pete Townsend, when he's playing, as you can tell, he's really energetic, and he loves um, super speedy strum patterns and stuff, and this is a great example of how he does that. So the, the normal, the chord we open with is an E, and the little riff that's happening there is a... Uh, so you're going to use your thumb. Um, uh, thumb over here, so you're gonna catch your thumb over to be able to catch the that part. So open and second fret on the sixth string, right? And then you hit your um, you hit your e, your. I'm gonna call it like an A chord, okay? It's a key of E, but I'm gonna call the chords like sort of the shapes that they're in if if we were down here. So. So that's the sort of groove. You notice that there's an upstroke on that where he's catching that. Um, and that's a little nuance that I think gives it character. Just kind of pop that in there. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is when you are barring that over, you sort of don't want that. So you want to be laying your index finger over so it so it mutes that and that might take a little bit of practice where you're laying your finger down but you just sort of you don't want to press you don't really want to hear that sixth note all right so once you got that groove going the next chord is like a b minor chord okay but you're not going to go all the way across and play the full full thing you're just going to grab this part so um, I would use the same fingers that you would usually do if you were doing your full B minor chord here. Um, but you're going to have your uh, middle finger and ring finger and pinky. And the reason you want that is because you're going to need to use your index finger to play this little riff. Right? And notice he's not... He's not really hitting these bass notes during that, so it's... But he is letting that E string ring out, right? Back to the top. B minor. G. Okay, so that's the power chord that sort of launches you back into your, into your uh, 
A shaped E chord. Right? And I like playing that G with that that note open again, right? Because we had that on the B minor. I sort of hear that going on. So that's my version of the G for this part. All right, and then the verses are just that. Yeah, it just repeats of that. Keep me moving. this great this great little turnaround where he just let all the strings ring open <laughs> so it's all all of them open you can, you can just do that and that sounds fine but he starts it I think he starts it with that and then he ends with um, he ends with sort of a, the part of a G chord or, a, or a, if you think about a D chord actually you're doing a D sus right so that's going to be on the end of it. So you're going to give it that, that, whatever those chords are. Someone will let me know in the comments what those chords actually are. All right. So those are sort of the verses and the turnarounds. Um, then it goes into the... Uh, I don't know if it's a bridge section. Um, sort of half time. Um, but you go into a C-shaped chord. Don't think about tomorrow. Right, so it's a C. C C, and you're walking down. I, I put my middle finger on the second fret now, and I leave my C note up here. Sort of an A minor seven. I leave that A minor seven and I add the G note. F major seven. I don't, I don't, I don't grab that. I'm driving free. Where's my home? Sort of go back and forth between that G sus and G with that D note in there. Of course, it's not a G, right? It's a D. That is technically a D chord, but G shape. All right, and you're back in. Now the rest of the song is sort of variations on all of that. Um, there's a lead guitar section, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. Um, and it's just a lot of fast, aggressive strumming. Um, there he's sort of modifying his, his A chord, where he's, he's doing this. He's grabbing those notes. Right, he's throwing that in there. So I'm not gonna go through all the, all, uh, measures and call out each one you can listen to it but the fun of this song is really just mixing and matching all of those and then sort of do your own variations to them but the speed and the power and the aggressiveness is really going to get the sound right All right, there's one slight variation on the outro. Um, so on the outro section, it's after sort of a long jam. <laughs> off of the E chord, um, which is gonna vamp up um, and it builds to this part. So you do your uh, B minor shape and you can play the full or do what we were doing. G, E 
minor 7. Back to e, uh, the A. And that's it. So one time. That's the acoustic part of going mobile. Now let's check out the electric part. All right, so the electric guitar parts on this, very, very cool. So it's actually making use of a of a, an effect that I have never used before. Um, and uh, so I went, did a little research and found out it's, uh, it's something called an envelope filter. Now Pete Townsend was always, as you all know, you know, very heavy by this period into establishing this really cool um, pattern of having keyboard beds um, that run sort of the length of the song um, and very advanced uses of early synthesizers, um, Moogs and, and whatnot and others. Um, but uh, best as I can tell, he actually plugged his guitar into, if you've seen those pictures of old synthesizers, maybe I'll find something and put it up here. They've got cables and everything on the old old synths where you had to like create, you had had millions of different patch cables. It looked like old telephone um, company stuff. But he used a system like that. Um, and as best as I can tell, he actually plugged his guitar into that. So he was running um, his guitar at some point, either amplified out of a you know microphone out of a speaker and then maybe that into that or maybe it was direct i don't know but he was making use of that technology that he was also using for his synths um, but he put his guitar into it and basically nowadays we have these great you know pedal effects that do everything that was ever invented ever um, for synthesizers um, in very small packages that we can put on our pedal board and this one is called an envelope filter and the specific one that i I'm using here is called a Qtron, um, and it's from Electro Harmonics, um, and you can see it sort of up close here. Um, the effects on there. So the so the effect on here, what it's doing is it's creating well, it's called an envelope filter, and it creates the ability to let your note on your guitar just sort of explode. It's almost like a, a tiny, really fast wah wah that just wah. You know, so it sounds like. So that's it. It also gets sort of into the area of sort of Frampton. You could probably pull off a pretty decent Peter Frampton cover with, with one of those. Um, but yeah, so it's a, it's the sort of envelope filter that he's using on this um, on this track. Now he's playing all over in the you know E uh, minor pentatonic, basically is what he's doing. Um, but uh, you know I won't call out every single you know note that he's playing going through this. But you know he's starting it you know up here on this. You can either play it there up at the 12th and 14th fret or you notice when you play these actually when, when you're playing on this it actually matters which strings that you're playing these on even if it's the same pitch notes I've noticed right so so I'm playing on the thinner sort of B string when I play it on the G string it's a little mute more muted yet and even more on the, on the first string so kind of a cool kind of cool qualities going on on here I haven't you know I've spent a total of 20 minutes on this thing and and there's um, a lot to learn on it but this is the effect that he's using right so he's he's playing around in E
goes to that uh, uh, that bridge part. I don't care about tomorrow. I'm an incandescent gypsy. That's my solution. Watch the police and the tax man miss me. I'm mobile. Right? Big ending. Very cool. <laughs> Other thing I noticed about this effect is when you run it, um, it, it it behaves very differently with things you put in front and behind it. Um, I was playing it just clean with a little bit of slapback echo. Um, I boosted a couple of frequencies, as you can see here, um, uh, what I did. But I initially had an overdrive in front of it, and it actually lessened the effect. It's actually more of a pronounced effect if you don't put a lot of dirt into it. Um, and So, anyway, envelope filter. This is the Qtron by Electro Harmonics. But there's a ton of them out there and um, super fun. Super fun. I may keep this. Okay, did you learn something new today? Hope you did. Um, if you haven't done so already, please jump down and click subscribe and ring the bell. Let you know every time I drop new content, which I do every single week. Please let me know in the comments what you think about this video. And if there's another song you want me to take on and do a similar lesson. And until next week, take care, everybody.